There's something growing on me, or I can't get out of bed. You get desperate, so then you go to a practitioner. The practitioner is simply someone who's found out that this is what happens and that they can partner with Jesus to, to, to help make it happen. Jesus is still the one that does deliverance, but he yeah. likes to use us as his hands and feet uh, for whatever he's doing. Justice, mercy, healing, deliverance. So to become a practitioner in this case is to have practice. <laughs> and to yeah. try. So well, I guess kind of like from my perspective of being relatively fearful of it still, even though I know I'm not, I shouldn't be like, if, how do I get practice without no. Like, well, I, you know, one way is to uh, continue to learn about it. Another way is to go to someone who's fluent in this or has some fluency in this and receive and receive the deliverance so that you can give it away. If, in fact, we all need some level of deliverance, then I would I would uh, uh, let, let someone pray for you that has some experience with this, that you trust, that you trust their character, you trust their theology to some degree even if you think their deliverance theology is weird. Um, a, a lot of people that I know learn about deliverance because they have a friend who needs help. And their mm. friend is like, I'll do anything. I get this a lot. Um, and so they bring them to me. Uh, and then they, and whenever someone says, can you pray, can you do a, set up a deliverance for this person? I say, yeah, uh, would you be willing to help? And they usually are. And so then they see it and they kind of go, wow. Wow. And yeah, oftentimes to be able to do it themselves too. Yeah. And they're happy because their friend has gotten some help. Like, okay, thank God. Uh, Cause I love this person. And then often they'll say, well, I think maybe I need deliverance. Mm. And I'll be like, great. And so I often do deliverances for people that brought somebody else in. And then I have deliverance evangelists <laughs> who they got freedom. And so they're telling everybody about it. Mm. I, I have one guy that got a healing during his deliverance. And he's probably um, b b brought 30 or 40 people to me in the last three years, oh, last wow. two years. Um, and so, uh, and, you know, I don't, the thing is, if it's the kingdom, you don't have to promote it. It just happens. It spreads. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you think about like the end of this passage, the demoniac, former demoniac, uh, yeah. like, no, no, come with me, go talk to people, go tell people what happened. <laughs> and yeah. that must have been interesting for him because, because for one, they probably didn't recognize him. Like, uh, well, I think that they saw, they saw, they saw, they, I think, I think they do recognize him because when they came here, they're like, this guy that formerly cut himself is now clothed and sitting in his right. right. So I think that they do recognize him. I think so too. But I, I wonder if they didn't initially recognize him because they, for them, he was the half naked guy that was all cut up mm -hmm. and, dro and drooling and, and whatever, howling. Yeah. Now he's like, he looks like you and me. And it's like, well, you, was that your twin brother? The, the second feeding of the multitudes is in the Decapolis. Are you familiar yep. with that whole thing? Yeah. So apparently he did his job because a whole new crowd gathered and, uh, and they were hungry. And so, yeah. Do you think they were Jews or do you think that they were mixed? Mixed. Really? I, I think the Decapolis was, uh, was well, Decapolis is the people there. Cause it's so interesting. Cause you know how, when and this is something that I've been processing too, is like Jesus came for obviously everyone eventually, but he was coming to the Jews and he like very much said like the, the person, the woman that was like the, for the dog gets the crumbs still like Jesus is like, I came like, obviously he's making a point there. Right. But yeah. it's, it, it seems difficult and contrary to what my normal thinking of Jesus, which maybe is a good thing, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. coming for the Jews to save like them first. And then since they rejected him, then it's like, okay, now other people can go to other people. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to think like in, in the Decapolis area, obviously it used to be where, uh, or maybe not obvious, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to show some maps of where uh, the 12 tribes were divided and then yeah. it was during Jesus' time. So that in complete half, or not half, but that the two and a half tribes on that side were completely disbanded, right? Like they were no longer, it was no longer uh, Israel or Judah. Um, yeah. So, but there were probably still Jews there, right? Um, yeah, I think, I think they were, uh, yeah. They were uh, nominal Jews. They were probably similar to Samaritans from that standpoint, that they were half and half, not only in their ethnicity, but in their worship. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there might have been Gentiles because the Romans were common, colonizing that area. And so, yeah, Jesus would, would focus on the Jews, but there would always be an overflow to Gentiles. And then we get cool stories like the Roman centurion or other people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and when Jesus would tell the Jews that, hey, God's into Gentiles, they would flip out on them.
fresh on me Come wake me from my sleep And blow through the caverns of my soul